Hi. Hi everyone. Hi, hi Rachel. Hi guys. How are you all? So the times have been really challenging. I hope that you guys are doing safe indoors at your home with your loved ones. And if not, I wish you all the strength. Just know that this time shall pass as well. But for now, let's divert our brains a little with some art therapeutic session. Let's wait for people to join in. Hi everyone. How's your Sunday going? Hi Rahini. Hello Nautilus Laces. Uh, thanks for asking. I'm doing fine. How are you? Thanks Raja. I'm excited too. sort of thank you I'm doing fine I hope you're doing good as well let's wait for some people to join in in a few minutes I'm quite excited for this live session. I have been waiting for this day for quite a long time. Have you joined from my account? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let me introduce you in the meantime. My name is Kagi Sundi. I go by the name Floral Charm. I'm gonna write down in the comments. So that you can see, this is my username on Instagram. As you can already tell, my forte is flowers. I really love painting flowers. Uh, but these days I'm into, I have, uh, you can see I have ventured a bit into aquatic creatures like um, fishes, whales, um, sharks, seahorses, etc. And ever since I started that, I literally couldn't look back. <laughs> so I thought it was great to, you know, conduct a workshop with pen, paper and scissors. And when uh, the kind team at Pen Paper Scissors asked me to do the same, I was literally overwhelmed. And I couldn't think of any other topic apart from that. And okay, I think my vo I think my voice is not audible. Is it any better now? Hi 
Hi, Maitri. Please let me know if I'm audible enough. So I am quite interested to begin this class. Uh, I have been painting from the last 7 to 8 years, if I'm not wrong. I am a self-taught artist and I'm from New Delhi. And I'm quite overwhelmed to uh, conduct this marine creatures painting workshop with you all. And let me show you something what we are going to cover in this class. Um, okay, we are going to make paint some amazing sea creatures like this. I have a set of five fishes painted over here. These are painted in a very vintage style. These have some cute ombre effects going on. As you can tell clearly, I really love pink. I am not afraid to go a bit too overboard with pink. If I do show you my paints collection, which I am going to show you in a bit, you are going to observe that I am quite a pink person. Okay. So next up is going to be this whale. This is this humpback whale which I'm going to show you how to paint. It has this very interesting uh, granulation effects going on. I'm going to tell you how to achieve that as well with watercolors. Next, you can also paint this particular sperm whale. We are going to paint particularly this uh, humpback whale as you must have seen in the tutorials this is a killer whale which you can which you can paint as well um, apart from that i have my sketchbook with me I, i'm going to demonstrate you how to paint this particular fish so um okay so i'm going to teach you how to paint this particular fish uh, and also I have one more whale painting over here. I know it's not um, visible quite, uh, quite properly over here but okay. So I think we have seen what all can we achieve. I mean what all are going to be the takeaways from this particular live session. So let's begin. <laughs> I think so that you must have gone through the worksheets on how to draw our fishes. So these are the two worksheets that you must have seen on pen paper scissors handle. And uh, before I forget, I'm, I hope that you guys are gonna paint along with me as well. If you do, I and, uh, the, and the team at pen paper scissor would love to see your recreations. Please do tag us along so that we could see your lovely creations and we could share your images on social media handles. Okay, so this is the first fish worksheet. If you might have missed out on it, then you can go through pen paper scissors account and you can uh, get these from their Instagram posts. This is the cheat sheet for the humpback whale. Okay, so in order for you guys to see it clearly, I'm gonna adjust the uh, angle of the camera. Mm. I hope that it's visible to you all. Okay, so okay. So I hope that you guys have brought along your painting essentials. We have our watercolors. Of course, since it's a painting session, so our prime medium is watercolor. I usually use the ones from Daniel Smith. Let me show you what my uh, current paint collection looks like. These are artist grade paints. Most of them are from Daniel Smith. Um, if you want uh, any of these uh, so if you want to buy any of these uh, paints or any of these art materials that I have showcased you in my uh, live workshop, please feel free to check pen, paper, scissors um, website. And if in case you get confused with anything, please feel free to DM. The team is quite kind enough to help you with 
even the tiniest of your query and they can arrange any of the art materials for you so now we are done with the introduction part let me show you my uh, art materials which is the fun part of course uh, coming to my collection of pinks these are Sennelier paints uh, this is this is more of a purple shade this is Helios purple this is Rose Mother Lake this is from Vincent and Newton this is the shade Potter's pink this is a really lovely brown tone pink we have mission gold paints as well this is in the shade shell pink which is a very pretty blush pink shade now these are my favorite Daniel Smith paints I mean all of these are my favorite but I'm a little more inclined towards Daniel Smith you know so this is uh, the shade Oprah pink this is a really striking neon it's a very in your face pink uh, it's uh, quinacridone magenta this is rose of ultramarine this is rod and genuine rose of Mal of ultramarine is a very interesting shade like let me show you this is the swatch card that I have now rose of this is the shade rose of ultramarine this is called uh, okay this is named so because it has these undertones of ultramarine blue as you might be able to see over here uh, it's actually a purple shade but it has the undertones of blue so this is a very very unique shade as you might be able to tell this is called Rodinet Genuine this is the shade Rodinet Genuine and this is a primatic uh, color from Daniel Smith let's come to our blues this is Sennelier uh, Cerulean Blue this is available on pen paper scissors as well and these are mine blue genuine this is lunar blue this is cobalt teal blue again these are very interesting blues uh, this is the shade cobalt genuine okay sorry this is the shade cobalt teal blue this is a very granulating teal turquoise type shade this is the shade mayan blue genuine this is a primatech that means it's made of minerals so whenever I say Primatech in Daniel Smith colors um, uh, you can see by this symbol P means Primatech it means that uh, the paint is made up of natural pigments that's found on the earth so that's why it granulates a lot next is Lunar Blue I'll come to my greens now I'm honestly not a, uh, a high on green person but since I paint a lot of botanicals so I tend to collect a lot of good green shades this is undersea green perfect for uh, since our theme is marine creatures so whenever i'm painting underwater botanicals i do tend to use this particular shade this is cascade green a very beautiful pop, uh, turquoise toned green this is serpentine genuine and this is green gold quite a good collection these are my set of neutrals Bloodstone Genuine, German Greenish Romber and Joseph C's Neutral Grey. I have only one yellow from Daniel Smith that is Quinacridone Gold. Since I don't have a very light yellow from um, my uh, artist grade collection, I tend to use Camel's Permanent Yellow Deep. This is good also. Now, I actually have all of these shades on my palette right now so i'm gonna pick the shades from my palette other collection so other art materials apart from this that you will need in this workshop is a jar of water if you have two jars of water then that's great i don't have to at the moment because i did I, um, five minutes ago from this workshop i just broke my jar the second jar of water i have the brush in the size double zero this is a very fine liner brush we're going to use it for details next is a silver brush this is a really famous um, brand whenever it comes to brushes this is your all-in-one kind of a brush so this is in the shade sorry this is in the size number two it is suitable for gouache as well as watercolor and this is a big fat brush it's in the size eight but if you have uh, say 16 size or 12 size or 10 size then that's gonna work as well but what uh, i would say if you just uh, want to use just one brush just try with the shade uh, sorry just try with the size of number two okay up next i hope that you guys have watercolor paper as well why is it important to have watercolor paper is because the thickness of a watercolor paper it actually helps to hold a lot of water since we're going to work with watercolors 
as the name suggests we are going to go high with our quantity of water we do want our surface to absorb a lot of water okay so that's why uh, we should use a good quality watercolor paper this is in uh, 300 gsm paper so we are going to begin okay so uh, let me just clean out my desk in a second so that we can make space for our tutorials. Let me is my swatch card you can refer to it now I'm gonna start off with painting our fish okay now uh, I have already sketched out my fish over here but just to give you a run through of how we have achieved this particular sketch is that first we are gonna okay so the first step is that you have to roughly draw a, an oval shape um, if you still don't know how to draw an oval shape just keep uh, just imagine a potato type of shape in front of you and just sketch a just you know roughly sketch out a potato once you're done with that I want you to extend the mouth a little okay um, you must have Im imagined a balloon you know a, a balloons uh, shape is in the type of a circle and then over here it gets a bit pointy but not too pointy and over here we tie a knot so you need to imagine it's something like that in the bottom section you need to draw an opening like this now we just have to roughly sketch out the fins okay just extend the fins over here add one or two over here so the easiest way to go about is this just google a couple of fishes you don't need to draw exactly like that but I need you to draw a very rough figure after doing that you can just add a few lines and you can add an eye and you can add some lips okay of course you don't need to go very detailed Please don't go very detailed also second thing that I want you to consider is that just don't go very uh, just don't put very strong graphite marks with your pencil otherwise you know once you go with your paint your paint is gonna mask all of this and after that you it's gonna be very difficult for you to erase off any excess pencil marks so it's better for you to you know in the first place if you have gone very dark with your pencil shading or if your pencil marks just erase them a bit I'm not erasing because otherwise um, it would be very hard for you to understand but uh, just keep it for reference for the second part uh, since we're gonna uh, paint a humpback whale as well so you have to sketch a slightly curved line like so after that leave a thumb sized gap over here I have left I have left a thumb sized gap over here draw another U it needs to be extended at the end okay it's very simple after that you just need to connect the mouth and add some fins over here once you add your fins just add your eyes and then you're good to go again it's a very easy thing now we're gonna come to the fun part what we're gonna do is that we're gonna paint this fish this is what we're trying to achieve but please keep in mind that we are not gonna achieve the exact same thing uh, let we're gonna you know experiment a bit with our colors I'm gonna choose those colors which are very interesting so that we all can have fun so let me prepare some stuff for myself this is my palette and since okay let me decide what paints should I use I'm gonna go I guess opera pink which is a very bright pink this is opera pink 
and next I'm gonna go with Rodinette Genuine and next we're gonna I'm gonna go with a watercolor paint that is from Camel it is permanent yellow deep so we're gonna use these three shades to achieve a very good effect so let me adjust so this is although I'm using my sketchbook but I do have um, a watercolor paper in this so let me put up my pens okay so I have actually drawn my fish but I have gone with a very light hand so that you guys can see um, let me take my dropper and let me wet some paint over here I hope that it's visible let me add some yellow now you guys please feel free to take any watercolor that you have right now um, you can of course I know that these artist grade paints are a little expensive but don't go overboard don't buy them don't uh, feel the need to buy everything in one go you can slowly and steadily build upon your collection like I did and but first I want you to start with whatever you have at home be it an, an artist create um, be it an artist create set or be it a student create set just go ahead and whatever you have at your disposal once you get familiar with the medium then you can splurge okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the body of my fish how I'm gonna paint is okay so how I'm gonna paint this that we are gonna wet some of our brush I hope it's visible yeah okay okay now uh, first I'm taking my fat brush this is the number 8 brush from Faber Castle uh, we are gonna apply some we are going to wet our brush and we are going to apply some water on the body of our fish. So now the thing with watercolor is that you need to bear in mind that um, since watercolor uh, creates more than half of the effect that you want to achieve on its own. So you need to be a little quick with watercolor. So yeah, take your time to experiment and get familiar with the process. So I'm going to wet it right like so <clears throat> I'm gonna lightly go over with the first wash this is called a wash you might have observed artists using this terminology a lot so this is our first wash of paint since rod and I genuine as you can see over here this shade is more of a purplish pink okay so someone is just asking please keep that guide paper on your table if possible okay Rahini um, I'll try to keep it like here in case you need it okay so I hope it's fine now Actually, I'm sorry if I get a bit late to respond to your comments because the you know, tryout is set at a very high level. Okay. Um, so what I was saying that now whenever an ombre, uh, so how an ombre works is that you go from dark to light or light to dark. So how I am going to do, so, so how I, I am going to proceed is that I am going to go from dark to light. In this case since my palette consists of a purple and then a bright pink and then a yellow. So I am going to go in that order. Rodinite Genuine is more of a purplish pink. So... 
I have it in my brush right now and I'm gonna give a light wash of Turbinate Genuine at the top. Now please bear in mind that I'm just going with a very light wash and spreading the paint like so. I'm extending my waters in this direction so that the paint just flows from top to bottom and it creates an ombre on its own. As you can see the second wash that I've added, it's spreading and it's creating the fix that I want to achieve on its own. Okay, so this is the first wash. Next, since my second color is opera pink, Opera pink is a very bright magenta, not a magenta, it's a very bright pink color, almost in your face, out of a neon shade. So I'm going to dab the shade lightly over here. Now I'm not going to touch it till the bottom half of my fish's body. I'm going to keep it till the middle itself in a way so that it sort of merges with my purple okay someone is saying it's a bubbly fish <laughs> i'm not quite familiar with the name uh, but yeah you can check it okay so um, up next we're gonna quickly pick up our yellow shade which is our permanent ye yellow deep from camel and we're gonna use this in the bottom. Pink and yellow, they create a very lovely combination. And we're gonna see it in the moment that on its own it creates and uh, it creates a really slight ombre of orange as well. Since red and yellow makes an orange and pink is sort of a derivative of red. So yeah, we have our first wash done. Okay. I'm gonna add a bit more of Rodenite Genuine. At the top to build up the intensity. And see, I'm not gonna paint in this particular direction like that i'm gonna just dab how you dab your makeup blender i mean some girls must be familiar with it so i'm using that particular motion to just dab the paint okay so it creates a very bulbous sort of a sort of an effect Now the good thing with with painting marine creatures is that you don't have to commit yourself to a particular palette. Uh, it's not always that you would see just yellow colored fishes or just blue colored fishes or just green colored fishes. Just allow yourself to set to set yourself free. Use any colors uh, colors that you have at your disposal. Even ink colors like this would work. Okay. You just need to experiment. And the more you experiment, the more you are going to feel free with your techniques. Now I'm taking my opera pink and I'm going to dab it like so. Okay. Now you must be seeing that it automatically creates a good shade of orange when it mixes with yellow. So that's a quite good thing. Now, uh, I don't know if you will be able to see, but I'm at the same time also using my tissue paper so that my brush removes all of the excess paint 
since our paint gets deposited at the bottom part over here so it's important that you know you let it soak on the tissue paper side by side so yeah now uh, the thing with watercolor is that um, it takes its sweet time to Okay, try blue yeah we are gonna try um, the blue shade as well in some other fish that is we are gonna paint a veil after that so we are gonna sh use a blue color palette so yeah so it does take some time to dry so let us allow the body of our fish to dry at the moment just keep in mind I haven't painted the eye portion of it and the lips part so we are going to do it a bit later now let's jump to our fins okay so we are going to paint our fins next the upper and the lower fin let me see what sh what color should we take let's take this opera pink since it's a very unique shade and i have seen very less shades like opera pink in case you want to see a proper swatch of this shade i'll show you so this is this is really lovely bright pink shade. This is fugitive, but since I scan most of my artwork, so I don't mind. This is the shade Rodinette Genuine. I know uh, identifying the shades through these names gets a bit tough, but it's fine. I mean, you'll get the hang of it. And this is permanent yellow deep. So these three are the shades that we are using. Thank you, Anupriya. Okay. So let's paint our fins in opera pink. Just be careful whenever you are, you know, painting the fins. Uh, don't directly touch this because it's still wet. This is our first wash. Okay. Now I'm going to decrease the intensity by adding more water to the paint. Okay. So whenever you add more, so whenever you keep on adding more water to the paint, the color strength, it decreases. Like here you can see, uh, there is very less water and the water to paint ratio is so where the paint has a high uh, quantity. Here the water has uh, a higher quantity. What palette is this? So this is the Khyati palette. You can get it from the website. And uh, so what I was saying that we are gonna add, uh, decrease the intensity. <coughs> I'm sorry. So we're gonna go from up to down. I'm intentionally leaving some white spaces over here as you might be able to see because I feel it just gives a good look to it. Okay. So, as you can see, although we have used just three shades, but we have achieved a lot more by using these three shades. We have achieved a slight tinge of orange. Over here, it's a bit of a blush pink shade. So, you know, by just varying the intensity of water and by mixing the shades, you can achieve completely different shades with your limited color palette itself. 
now we're gonna let me just try to build on the body like so now i'm gonna define the body of the fish in the meantime the fin is drying what i'm going now what i'm doing is that i'm lining the body of the fish I am using the yellow paint to give a proper structure since it has mostly dried and I am gonna roughly blend out the end of this since it has a very sharp uh, end so I am gonna soften it a bit by using some water. Now at this point you might be thinking that it's looking a bit rough but trust me the good thing with watercolor is that once it dries, once the paper dries the look automatically comes back together. As you can see over here just give it some time. Once we are gonna layer up, once we are gonna layer it up with our white paint as well as our mm -hmm. pencil colors mm -hmm. it would automatically look put together. Okay, what sheet is that? does it leak through the pages no no since it's a watercolor paper and it's quite thick as you might be able to see it's quite thick than your regular paper it does not leak through so uh, you just need to give it some time after that it's gonna look very good so as you can i might i can show you the rest of my paintings as well where i have used a lot of watercolor over here also i had used a lot of watercolor here i did not use anything else i didn't even use my pencil colors i used a lot of watercolor but the thing is that uh, once the paper had dried it automatically looked put together so yeah in the meantime let's just paint the bottom part of the fish okay As usually we're gonna water it down to decrease the intensity what which brand paper it is okay so let me tell you this particular paper that i'm using is from canson i think uh, you can either try brustro or canson if you are at a beginner level but always make it a point that whatever paint sorry uh, whatever brand of paper you go with it should be above 300 gsm if you are experimenting with watercolor always make sure that it's above 300 gsm so that the paper thickness it is appropriate and you know it does not bend whenever it dries you want the paper to lay flat whenever your painting dries so that's an essential now one thing okay that's a, actually a very good question because it uh, makes me 
discuss another topic is that uh, whenever you are drawing out with watercolors now just be sure by, uh, that uh, you just do not uh, compromise with the quality of your paper you may uh, try student grade watercolors like you may even try those 30 rupees watercolors that's just fine but make sure that you just start out with a good quality watercolor paper anything above 300 gsm i'm gonna type it out on the comments as well so that you take so that it is handy for you 300 gsm watercolor paper the brand that i'm using is canson but you can also try brushstro okay so that is that okay so I'm going to soften the edges a bit so that we do not have any stark watercolor lines. Now uh, these two parts have dried out and for this particular small fin I'm going to use Rodinite Genuine. genuine because the paints are made up of authentic minerals that are found in the earth now definitely it does have synthetic uh, inks or some gum arabic solution without it uh, no paint can be made but I think this is a really uh, unique selling point of Daniel Smith paints that these colors they granulate so well and you know the half of the fix that you want to achieve with the watercolors you automatically get it and that too very easily once you use them so once you upgrade your collection you can definitely consider this plant but in the beginning there is no need to uh, spend so much but if in case you want to then you can check out the website as uh, the team has really good discounts. Pen, paper, scissors has really good discounts on Daniel Smith, which are really found on the internet, especially in India, considering it's a foreign brand and it's very, you know, it's sparsely available in the art stores. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, I cannot approve any of the request for you to be in the video since I have to finish the tutorial. Uh, right now we are just left with these two a uh, tail I mean with just one tail of the fish I think I'm gonna go with opera pink only to maintain the color palette I'm gonna go with a very low intensity oh ho, I spelled it And on the buff part, I am going to add a high intensity of opera pink, but this time I'm going to allow the colors to merge because I'm going to show you how the paint looks when they merge and the beautiful ombre that they create. I think watercolor teaches you patience also. 
half of the patients in my life that I've got is from <laughs> practicing watercolor. Oh yeah, this medium demands a lot of patience. But at the same time, it's quite fun to work with. Like out of all of the mediums that I've tried, I found watercolors to be the most intriguing. First of all, it comes in such a large variety of shades. Like it's next to magic. And also the effects that you can create is quite, you know, considerable. It's just that you need to get the hang of it, which you surely can with practice. Okay, now we have the... I hope it's still visible. Okay. I'm sorry if I got lost. There was some network connectivity issue. I hope that you are still seeing my work. Okay. So, this has dried a bit, but I'm and still not touch it since I can see it's a little damp at the moment so right now I'm gonna paint the lips of the fish I'm gonna go with Rhodonite this is gonna make this painting look very romantic from now and I'm excited to see what final result would we get. Okay, so while the lips are drying, I'm gonna paint the inside circle of our fish. Okay, just remember to go with a very light hand and take your time because over here you have to be a bit careful, not very careful. Just be a tad bit careful. The thing with watercolor is that you need to control the water on your brush. Once you get the hang of it, trust me, um, more than half of the game is achieved. Okay, so over here, we have painted it. Now, I never, no, so for the eyes, you must be wondering, now we should go with black. Hi Ayushi. Okay, video is not visible properly. Is it visible now, Rahini? Guys, can you please let me know if it's visible? Okay. So, now I'm not gonna go with a black because I feel black is a very flat or dead color. Thank you so much, Ayushi. It's really sweet. Thanks, Richa, for confirming. Thanks, Rahini. So, um... Now I'm not going to go with black because I feel black is a very flat or dead color. Instead we are going to go with something like a grey or a brown. Now we are going to take some grey. This is Joseph Z's grey. This is Joseph Z's neutral grey I should say. I'm going to take a little bit. Let me show you the swatch. Because I feel grey adds still adds a bit life to your paintings rather than as compared to black black kinds of kills all of the colors i feel like so i never use black in my paintings i have seen so many artists artists doing the same and uh, maybe you should also you know try painting one eye with black color and painting one eye with a gray or a bluish uh, gray or a brown color and then you can compare what effect do you like the most okay so very carefully at this point of time you need to you know ex remove the excess water with your tissue paper because you don't want to ruin the eye 
Just go very slow. Take your sweet time. And yep. It looks good to me now. Now I can say our painting has started coming together. Thank you, Mridul. Okay, now our painting has started coming together. Up next, what we are going to do is since our painting has almost kind of dried, it's in a damp state, we are good to paint the fins. I would still not recommend to uh, jump to painting or going with the next few steps on your body because I can still feel it's kind of a bit damp. Unless and until it is completely dry, I would recommend you to you know experiment it with a bit. Now as I was uh, saying earlier that watercolor, with watercolor you need a lot of patience. Thank you so much not less laces. Uh, you need to be very patient. So let's just try giving the details to our fence. Now comes the fun part. Uh, we are going to use some other medium that is pencil colors. Thanks Anupriya. We are going to use pencil colors. Now the kind of pencil colors I have over here are normal pencil colors as well and I also have something called as a watercolor pencil. With watercolor pencil what you can do is that you can use them as a pencil color as well and after that when you apply water to it with a brush then you can achieve the fix uh, similar to that of a watercolor. Like, let me show you. This is from Stedler. This brand is called Stedler and I'm gonna watch it a bit over here okay now you can see okay now this is not exactly the effect that I want to do um, I'm just gonna use the pencil color as it is that is I'm not gonna wet the pencil colors to achieve the effect that of a wet of a watercolor but uh, if you want to do that please feel free to do so the brands that i have over here are uh, stedler i also have kohinoor and uh, i also have montmartre okay so you can uh, get whatever you have at your place and just try to experiment a bit but for beginners what brand i would recommend is just go and straight away buy stedler it's just a one-time investment and it's not that expensive considering that you would get 48 colors which is a very good quality and I mean uh, quantity wise it's very good and you must be surprised to hear that I've been using these Stedler pencil from the last seven years and they are still going strong so a little bit goes a long way in case you are uh, you know in case you resonate with my style of painting so a little bit goes a long way so I want something in the color story of purplish pink so I'm gonna use the one by Kohinoor I guess this is called Kohinoor hard mud this is partially available in India but you can either buy Stedler or just uh, you know message pen paper scissors in case you want this particular brand only so I'm gonna just connect the color to the body so that it sort of looks uh, that it's emerging from the body itself okay this particular shade in general we are basically blending it in so I'm going in this particular motion okay So that you get this gradient it's very simple it might look a bit intimidating but it's very simple thanks Aishi okay so now what we have is we are gonna take a crimson shade and we are gonna line it like so
in order to give the illusion of the of the fence, the three dimness sort of a thing for the fence. I'm gonna add a bit of this shade to add some depth. Now again I'm going with this particular motion on the fins to give an ombre effect. Thanks Maitri. So I'm gonna add the same effect over here as well. Like so. Let me add in the first over here, in the first section of the film. And let me go with blending. So similarly I'm gonna do the same effect for this fin as well and I'm gonna add the details that it looks put together. Similarly I'm gonna flip my painting and go but with this shade I don't want it to look too stark. I want it to be blended very seamlessly. Actually watercolors is quite an easy medium, it just requires some patience and practice. You can mix and match with other mediums as well, for example pencil colors, your pens, other paints or even acrylics for that matter to achieve very interesting effects. Once you know how to break down the painting, it becomes very easy for you. tag us in your post guys if you recreate these paintings you will have to share it on our handles okay so this is what we have achieved by now Thanks Anupriya. So now we can now come to the body of our painting because uh, I feel that now it's uh, in a good state to take more steps. I think it's a little bit still damp but I think it's manageable. So now what we're gonna do it in order to make it look a bit 3D now since we want to achieve an effect something like this what we need to do is that we need to shade our topmost portion that is the portion over where we have used rhodonite genuine um, or this darker pink so that it sort of merges and the three and it looks a 3D uh, and it just gives a 3D finish to your painting so with a light hand uh, just consider that I have I am uh, holding my pencil from afar i'm not pen i'm not holding my pencil from this i don't want a very dark effect i want a very light effect a very soft blended in finish it's just how you would apply your eyeshadow application on your eyelid which is similar to that Again. 
using this motion okay yeah we have this now just to tie it all together I am gonna with my pencil color sketch the outline of the body of the fish and soften up the lips like so I'm gonna also give some blending on the bulbous side of our eyes and also I'm gonna add some more effect around the eyes so that it looks a bit realistic okay now uh, the painting style or the illustration style that we are doing right now it's not completely realism based it's a bit realism based but it's not completely realism we're just having fun by painting these lovely creatures because that is what we need to achieve now since you might have observed that one fin like this must have disappeared no issue you can uh, bring it to life again by layering your watercolors what we're gonna do is that we are gonna add it I'm gonna grab this dark color paint Rodonai Gemrin and we'll pick it up with a brush now one thing to consider is that I have um, a lot of brush sorry a lot of paint in my brush at this time uh, the paint should be more than the quantity of water in your brush right now since we are going to be layering No, I'm not gonna go into much details. I'm just gonna do a slight outline of the fin because I'm anyway going to layer up with a white shade. Okay, so this is what we have. Let's make it a bit 3D by softening up the edges. Okay, yeah, so we have this. Thanks, Ruchi. Now, over here, we are gonna add the details to our tail. I'm going a bit heavy handed since this is the sides of the fish here also as you can see but while I'm blending in uh, I guess my tip broke I'm, use, I'm gonna use something else um, okay this is a similar color Blend in. Okay. okay. 
so i think at this point we have given enough details but the last thing which is missing and what differentiates from these uh, i mean what is remaining with this painting uh, is the white detail now i think in any particular palette using a white shade is very important it gives more cleanliness to your paintings what you can do what you can use at this point is that you can use a normal white color pen uh, yeah so here it is you can either use um sakura jelly rolls this is a white gel pen you can either use um a white acrylic paint but uh, since i usually prefer yeah definitely you're right abhishek uh, the details make all of the difference so i uh, in my experience i have observed that nothing works better than dr ph martin's bleed proof white uh, you can either use this or you can use liquitex um, heavy body white color paint in the shade titanium white that's a very good brand as well and i'm glad that liquidex is now available in india so we're going to take a little bit of white with our detailer brush this is the 00 brush from fib castle this is quite an inexpensive brush i guess it was for 40 rupees or something 40 or 50 not more than that so what we're going to do is that we're going to add our details let's start with the lips okay so now you can see why i was you know emphasizing on adding the details it makes whole lot of a difference can you also show tutorial for the flowers you showed us yeah i would love to you know um you can request uh, if you want to see more of uh, these workshops you can request pen paper scissors and i'll be glad to conduct another one for you so i'm going to take some more white on my brush and this Mm. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some details on the bottom part of the fins so that they look a bit 3D, a bit 3D. I don't call myself a realistic artist because that is a different league altogether. But uh, yeah, we can try to experiment. gives a very fun look and a very unique look to your paintings now the thing is, thing with these paintings is that whenever you paint something you can either sell it or you can you know make your um, you can either sell your prints or you can print the same on a t-shirt and sell them across and just build a small business based on these things that's what i did personally that Then stroke of white over here, and I'm gonna add a thin stroke over here as well. dabbing some more white this is really good quality like i have used so many alternatives just to save money but i know this is a bit expensive this was for like 900 bucks but nothing works better than this like nothing works i've tried the sepal line as well just to save on my money just to save money but really the fact that it gives you it just gives you a superior opaque stroke even acrylic can't give you the same effect so i highly highly recommend like if there's just one thing that you want to you know purchase or invest after going through this live workshop just buy this of course every every opinion that i'm showcasing right now is non sponsored it's just based on my experience um 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the details. Just a few lines. So yes we have this and we are just in and we are just left with this particular portion where we need to add the details in our tail. I just joined which watercolor are you using? Fish is slowly coming to life here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the watercolors that I'm using is from Daniel Smith. Let me show you the paints. Um, okay. so the yellow is from camel and the rest two are from daniel smith it's this bright color is called oprah pink the swatch is like this and the other shade is rodonite genuine the swatch is like this okay I'm gonna add a few more strokes to bring it to life. And yeah, we are almost here. Hmm. I think we are almost done. Just last, just last bit of work. So we have successfully painted our fish. So this is the lovely pair of fish of fishes that are swimming happily in our ocean. Uh, so yeah, we have completed our pair. Please, please, please do tag me in your recreations. And for now, we are done with our fish using a limited color palette now this is what i wanted to emphasize guys i have used just three shades so again it's not compulsory for you to you know uh, purchase every single uh, paint on this planet just pick out the paints or the colors that you are attracted towards the most in my case since i'm a pink person i like to have every single <laughs> you know a shade of pink in my collection so that i can explore it to its maximum potential and uh, yeah we have it it's in this one is in a purplish magenta theme this is in a complete pink theme so yeah this is on a sketchbook paper let's move on to our veil i think i can keep it aside for now and i'm gonna jump over here let me keep this aside. Hmm. Next up is our veil. Thank you so much, Rohan. Thank you so much, Richa. Sorry, Rahul. Thank you so much, Rahul and Richa. Uh, on pack veil. As I told you, you have to draw a slight curve line and then an extended U, extend it a bit from the back. Be sure to leave a thumbs cap whenever you start paint. Uh, whenever you start sketching the U connect 
to make the mouth paint some uh, sorry just get some simple fins and tail and add some lines and add your eyes it's a very simple sketch guys it's available on their feet so, and of course you can you know make some variations just like this even this is made of a similar thing you have a curve coming through then you have a u you have connected you have added the fins and the tail it's just a similar process and what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna paint i have the sketch already available with me i'll come back in a second just uh by washing the brushes as well as uh, getting new paint water i'll be back in 10 seconds guys In watercolor it's quite necessary to use fresh water to get exact colors now someone said that they wanted to see a blue palette so yeah in this particular section we are gonna paint a blue fish this is the effect that it's okay so this is the result that we want to achieve okay so for this we are taking a blue palette let me show you the colors now these two are the shades that we are going to use. We are going to use Lunar Blue and we are going to use Mayan, Mayan Blue Genuine. This is a primatic color. Uh, that is, it's made from this Mayan rocks found in nature. Uh, now they both swatch like this. This is Lunar Blue and this is Mayan Blue Genuine. Okay, so we are going to use these two. And one last color that we are going to use is from this palette one minute okay so this is another palette of mine guys um, we're gonna use Daniel Smith's uh, buff titanium for this under mouth portion these are my other paints these are white knights these are really good quality as well this is a very affordable option guys in case you are finding uh, the artist grade materials too expensive then white knights is a perfect option for you since it's affordable as well and it has such unique colors like this mint you cannot find this mint anywhere uh, you have this coral even coral is very difficult uh, to find a good shade of coral then you have all of these pastels it's a very you know yummy palette okay so what we're gonna do is let me have a water let me have some water guys one minute okay so what we're gonna do is we are gonna use these two paints we so this is our Mayan blue genuine and this is lunar blue Now this veil would be over in quite um, less time. This won't take so much time because in the previous artwork there was a lot of detailing involved. Here also there is a little bit of detailing involved but since we have to paint a large uh, body of area in, uh, in you know very less time so we are going to make it quick. So these two are the shades that I'm going to use. Let me show you a quick swatch. This is Mayan Blue Genuine. This is Lunar Blue. Okay. This is heavily granulating and this is buff titanium. Buff titanium is a very neutral shade. It's a very calm shade that I would tell you. It's good to have it handy. Okay, so these two sh are the shades. These three are the shades that we are going with. Let me clean up my space. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just focus on our paints. So as I told you before, we are gonna make it a bit quick with our watercolors. Except for leaving this eye portion, we are gonna uh, spread water on most of our area of the body of the fish okay that is from here to here to here we are going to leave this area right now that is the fins part and the mouth part so spread water now the good thing with watercolor paper is that it absorbs water fast it's an advantage and at the same time it's a disadvantage as well because we need to be very quick now the area is wet i am taking some lunar blue and just spreading the paint Okay, so as you can see that it's creating a lovely ombre, sparsely I am adding some water, some water to give it a good effect. That's it. That's what you want to do in the first place with your dark color. Now since Mayan Blue Genuine is a bit light, it's a bit dark, this one is a lighter shade so I'm gonna pick up that shade and dab it in similar manner what we did the last time now what you can see is that it granulates beautifully it's creating these effects okay being carry i'm being very careful not to ruin the eye portion okay yeah, that's it. I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm not going to do much detailing, just add a bit drops of paint over here and here and here. Yep, and we're gonna allow it to dry. In the back part, I'm gonna add some blue again using a wet on dry technique okay so you can see that it creates a lovely texture over here okay so let it dry in the meantime we are gonna paint the fish Let's just wet the area over here once again. Okay. Adding the blues. And then the back side of the fin. 
is going to be a bit dark since it would add a little shadow okay so this is the effect that we have achieved and it looks really lovely okay in the leftover area uh, taking a smaller brush because I want to proceed a little carefully I am picking a little bit of puff titanium placing it over here and I am painting careful not to include the other blue section This paint is very good if you have it handy. Puff titanium is a neutral shade but I never thought um, it would be, I would be using this paint so much. I have used it in making florals and you know and what not. Okay, so I didn't notice that uh, it is actually connected. So I'm gonna connect these two. The blue portion with. we're gonna allow it to thank you Anu thanks not less laces thanks Richa thanks Abhishek okay so we're gonna allow it to dry and in the meantime we're gonna paint the eye again taking a grey shade I'm not gonna take black um you can still see it's a bit So at this point I'm gonna wait for it to dry. I don't want to ruin the painting. So let's wait for it to dry a bit. Because if you go over the wet part you can uh, ruin the colors. So it's always better for your artwork to dry. excess water with the tissue paper now it will take away some color but it's just to demonstrate to you if in case you are quick if you are short of time and you need to fasten the process tab okay <clears throat> so 
Yeah, this is just one of the examples that you can achieve from your painting. Also, let me show you one more sketch that I made just yesterday while I was practicing. Um, this is this one. So yeah, the uh, possibilities are quite endless. I just need to experiment. Now just um, take some pencil colors. I'm taking a very dark shade of blue. Uh, let me take some gray. Let me find the good blue. Okay, here's one. gonna add some depth to a work over here. Just gonna add some depth on our top part of our paintings. Now guys at this point you are free to layer it up but since I don't want to take much time of yours, so I'm speeding up the process by adding pencil colors. So this is another hack that you can use if you want to speed up your process. You can add the colors not by the watercolors, but you can add them by using the pencil colors. my marker and add the necessary details. I'm taking a zinc clean color dot marker in the shade fawn and I'm adding the lines. You can add it with your pencil color, I am just using my marker because I like the shade. Now we just want to improve our eye look. So right now we will be softening the edge with the watercolor. Now that's why I told you not to go quite close near the eye. You can always, you know, add the touchings later on.
adding some paint to the fence. the fence with something somewhat like this and using a lead proof white to make our pail look very cartoony. I'm trying to give it a little bit of an aged look because I feel like sharks are very old creatures. Mm. adding some wrinkles around the eyes to give it a good effect and lines around over here as well I'm gonna add a few lines You can add the same effect to your fence. Okay, so roughly I have added the lines. So yeah, we are done with our wheel. So the only difference over here is that I have here gone with a second wash of paint. I have layered the paint a lot so as to achieve the effect but again you if you just layer just one wash then you are good. I will show you another example. I will show you just another example of it. This is the wash. Here I have layered multiple washes and here I have layered only two washes. So the effect is quite evident to you. So you can achieve the same effects by layering the number of washes of paints. So yeah, um, I hope that 
this life painting was uh, successful in terms of learning something new. So you can achieve these paintings. So if you have any of the doubt, so if you have any doubts, please feel free to DM us so that uh, we can guide you through any step of the way. Also, you can purchase any of these uh, art supplies that you have found and trusted on um, penpaperscissor.com. If there are any questions, as always, my DMs are always open. If you need any art supplies recommendations as well, then you can ask me. Also, lastly, I would love uh, to see all of your creations. Thank you so much, Nautilus Laces. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience, guys. Uh, let me face the camera. Okay. So, thank you so much, guys, for being a wonderful audience. Uh, this live session was a tad bit lengthy uh, just because I wanted to show you in detail how the painting process looks like. Um, don't find it a bit intimidating. I'm sure once you get the hang of it, you will learn, you know, you literally learn everything. I really hope that you guys keep safe indoors in these tough times. May God be with you if the scene is otherwise and please I hope that you take care of yourselves. Please to get in touch with me. Thanks for being such a wonderful audience and hope you have a very good weekend. Thank you Saurabh. Thank you Richa. Bye bye. Take care.